Today, everyone is at work, and I have a pretty cool and atypical job to do. Um, these are the tools I'm going to need to complete my task. Um, I have my tripod set up so you all can experience this. Um, and then I have, let's see, baggies and a trash bag in case the baggies aren't big enough. And a towel and my seat and the bucket in which um, let's say the star of the show is contained and then a bucket with water to help clean up and some gloves yes I'm gonna wear gloves I usually don't wear gloves for something like this but um, let's just say I haven't done quite enough research to make sure that I don't need gloves so there's gloves and there's, let's see, uh, knives and my rag for wiping up fluids and a shovel. And it looks like I get to break in the shovel because the tag is still attached. So this shovel will have a unique first task. Alrighty, let's check out what's in the bucket. I have donned my gloves. Alrighty, so... This is something I packed up the other day, but I didn't include it in the packing video because it's a surprise. My sister has wanted one of these for quite a few years, and I have been looking. I had standards, you know, so anyone just won't do, and I had to look and look. But finally, I found one the other day. So this, let me get it out of here, is an armadillo. And, you know, I needed one that was fresh and delicately hit. Because you don't just go around willy-nilly picking up any old roadkill. And she wanted to make something out of it. Actually, I come to find out she wanted me to make something out of it. And the first part of making something out of it is clean it up a little. You know, we gotta get the, the guts out and dried out. And anyway, um, so... Here's what we're doing today, cleaning the uh, armadillo. Now, I've never done this before, so this is my first time cleaning the uh, armadillo. I have cleaned numerous other roadkill in my lifetime, and again, they're all fresh and delicately hit. Um, so, we are going to learn how to clean up the uh, armadillo. Clearly the flies want to help, and if they're going to be super insistent about that, then they're just going to have to go, or we're going to have to go. <laughs> um, but I'd rather not clean this in my sister's house, you know, but we'll just, so we'll just see. But we do not need the contents of the abdomen, or really anything except the head, the tail, and this cool covering, protective covering. So we're going to remove these contents. Might consider skinning out the feet later on because, I don't know, make something cool out of them too probably. But here we go. I'm going to start off with this knife because it has been great for skinning things and not needing a whole bunch of sharpening or any sharpening in between. You can skin several deer and not need to sharpen this thing. So I'm going to start like I do with a snapping turtle, just kind of skinning around the harder parts of the body and taking them out. And then possibly the flies can go munch on that for a while while I clean out the rest of it. So far, this is working really well. Now I'm going to keep the tail attached. I'm going to skin around it on the soft belly side.
we're staying care being care we're being careful to stay right up against the outside covering because we want as little meat and connective tissue attached to the part that we're keeping because we're gonna have to remove all of it so the less we have to deal with the better all right, I'm skinning around the head again keeping the head attached all right well I got the tail loose enough to where I'm pretty sure I can snap the bone there um, Jenny doesn't have a bone saw and I didn't bring mine so I'm gonna just try to twist and snap this without snapping it off of the rest of the part I'm saving these flies have been a bit annoying but not to the point where I'm moving because if I just kind of leave them have let them have the head for now they're they're good pretty soon they'll have other parts that they would probably prefer so I'm gonna try to snap this tail Okay, there, I think we got it. Well, that worked pretty well. So now I'm gonna pick up on this and skin between the body and the part we're keeping. I've separated the tail and it is firmly attached to the part we're keeping, but no longer firmly attached to the rest of the body. So we're gonna skin out under here and peel it right out of its outer covering. I was gonna detach the head the same way, but it's a little extra delicate up there because some bones are smashed a little. So we're just gonna skin it out this way and deal with that when I get there. I've got it about completely skinned out. So gonna take a couple more swipes at it and then we're gonna lift it out and deal with the head where it's attached. I'll scoot you over buddy. Alright flies you're getting annoying. Alright so I want to make sure the head is stays on there. I don't want to break the bones any worse than I already did. Well, I didn't. The car did. Oh, look at that. Dang. That went much easier than I thought. Get out of there, fly. I need your services. See, now they're all over this. So they're going to be out of my way. We're going to go break in that shovel pretty soon and bury this thing. Um, for now, I can just recline. Alright, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We did a pretty good job. See there? There's really not a lot in there and I didn't even have to switch out knives. Like this thing rocks. So I'm gonna clean this up a little. Do some scraping. I could probably do some of that in the house. <laughs> there it worked. <laughs> no, she wouldn't care. Well, yeah, I'm not betting on that. So Anyway, I'm going to do some cleaning on this probably a little later. And the plan, so here's the plan. I think, I think this is the plan. She wanted to make a coffee table. I don't know how in the world they're going to make a coffee table out of it. So she's selling for a basket. And I know that's doable because I used to have one. But when I retired from teaching, I gave it away. Um, and I'm not going to ask for it back. So I'm just going to make a new one. And what it was, was it had dried kind of like that. And it had bent the head up a little. I will have to do some gluing because there's a little crack here. But, you know, we'll just do the best we can. And then they curved the tail up like that. And you could put, I don't know, flowers or whatever the heck you want in it. It's a basket. <laughs> So that is the plan. There's a little bit of a crack on the back, but it's not so bad either. Like we could glue that and make it to where you really can't even tell. 
So we're going to work on that. It's really pretty cool. Like an accordion. I love these little critters. And they're so cool when they run around in the woods. But anyway, in case you're wondering, yes, I did look into the, the legality of this. And it's perfectly legal. And to, much to my surprise, I even learned that PETA supports the picking up of roadkill. Because, like, you didn't kill it on purpose. Actually, I didn't even kill this thing. I'm just giving it a purpose in the afterlife. <laughs> we also have a purpose in the afterlife, don't you think? <laughs> no, I don't want to be a basket, though. <laughs> it's time to dig a hole. And I'm going to put it right here and show my sister. I don't know if she's going to be interested in any of the bones once it's done being worked over by the microorganisms and bugs and such. But anyway, I'm putting it here and I'm going to spare you the actual digging process. I'm sure, you know, I'll dig a hole, but I'll show you the, the burying part just in case anyone's interested. here digging a hole and had to stop because this little dude came to check it out. The flies weren't as terrible as I thought they would be so I decided to skin out the front and back feet and the skin over the belly because I figured I could tan it or make something out of them. No need to bury and waste these parts when I might be able to figure out something pretty cool to do with them. So Anyway, this is a close-up of a back foot of an armadillo. Bet you never got to see one of those up close before. And here is the front foot of an armadillo. These are the coolest critters. I just wish when they were alive in the road and people tried to straddle them to keep them alive, I wish they didn't jump up and crack their back on somebody's underside of their car. And that's exactly what they do. They end up killing themselves like that. And then, sure, they don't intend to. It just happens because of their little adaptation to protect themselves is kind of counterproductive in that instance. But anyway, they are super cool. I admire them immensely. And I prefer them to be alive. But in the case that they aren't, you know... Might as well be useful instead of going to waste. Rest easy, Mr. Armadillo. I didn't dig a very deep hole because, well, number one, the tree roots were a pain in the rear end. And number two, I figured, you know, we're probably going to want to see the bones at some point. So I'm going to cover it up with the sandy soil that um, used to fill this spot. And then I'm going to put this here log on top of it to keep it safe from scavengers. And we'll just see what happens after that. But covering them up. Well, there we have it. Rest in peace, Mr. Armadillo. If I were to play a eulogy song for you, it would be Squash by Town Van Zant Because it's really pretty appropriate for this particular situation. I'm not going to do that because of potential copyright issues, but if any of you feel so inclined, give it a listen. I chased all the flies away and stuck the part we want to keep in a bag and double bagged it in a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag and stuck it in the fridge with appropriate warnings. So I guess we'll just figure out the preservation part of it later. Here we are all cleaned up as if nothing ever happened and maybe it didn't. But one thing I know I could really use is a shower. After doing a little more research I figured it would be a really good idea to add an epilogue to the whole armadillo saga. Um, I learned that they do or can carry leprosy, so I'm really glad I wore gloves and 
and highly recommend that if you decide to preserve an armadillo for your very own, that you wear gloves too. And pay a little extra attention to cleanliness in general. Probably be a good idea. Also thought that I would um, post the link to the recommended eulogy song, um, Towns Van Zant's Squash, uh, in the description below. I really hope that you give it a listen. It's pretty cool and a little bizarre how well it really fits the situation. <laughs> Please check it out.